Hey everyone, I'm Nato King, and it's been a while, but it's time to get back to folklore. Last time we left Ellen with a very difficult decision. Should she go into the Forgotten Palace to fight the folklore, or go down to the Swamp of Oblivion to save Hervé? And because we're playing as Keats, she doesn't even get to make that decision. We're going to save Hervé. So Ellen heads off into the palace. And we can't even follow her. So down we go, down this long, spiraling path. I think that's the first we've heard that little tidbit. Although I'm pretty sure that line was meant for Ellen and not Keats. I hate this entrance. It, it just doesn't look much like an entrance. But here we go, pressing into the Swamp of Oblivion to chase after Hervé. And the first thing we see are some familiar folks. So I'm gonna try to take these guys out from the distance, as usual. I didn't think they could drop ice blocks on my head. Ah, there's the culprit. It's a Selkie, one of our new folks for the chapter. And neither non-elemental nor destroy attacks seem to be affecting it all that much. Not drawing out its id with fire. I can't even tell whether it's, it is coming out or not. Bugaboo is blocking my camera. Alright, let's uh, see. We got Slash. Haven't used that in a long time. No id. Well, I'm running out of elements rapidly. Uh, only thing I've got left, I think, is Earth. Or Ice. Yeah, Ice isn't going to do it. See if I can thin out the ranks of Afank here, trying to smash me with their ice hammers. Nope, Selkie moves too fast. And I never figured out what would draw out its it. Well, I'll capture one later. Now to take on Afank, just shoot them from a distance. And let's see if I can... Nope. There's another Selkie, dang it. Where is it? There it is. I didn't think Keats actually encountered any status effects, but apparently Selkies use charm as well. And there's its id. But I have to wait for it to get up before I can hit it again. So let's go with our other Earth Elemental attack, Quasarilli. Again, you don't get to see it very well here. I'll show it another time. And it's another new folk! Augusky! Or Augusky. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I think this is the one that Red Rover said was related to Boobry before. And I've already got one. You might notice a pattern if you're paying attention to the descriptions of the new folks. Or you might not, who knows. Try to capture this August quickly because it at least is just the shot method. And already I've released one of its karmas just by capturing one more. Now I'll see if I can capture this Afank with nothing else at all attacking me. Well, 
looks like I'm going to be successful for once. These advanced capture methods, like I said before, really serve little purpose but to make it almost impossible to capture those folks. And I'm still on the lookout for any crystals that might hold more picture book pages. And instead, just another August key. Pretty sure I need to capture more of them. I should probably check that. Still no crystals. So let's see, we can go straight ahead or off to this little tiny passage to the right. And I've got enough cold tree nuts to build up Selkie. And I need to defeat five Urisk. Not going to happen anytime soon. Nor probably is capturing more Selkies. Need to capture more August Key. And that's all the folks I've got so far for this chapter. Of course, the swamp is reasonably sprawling. It's got plenty of rooms. Plenty of small spaces for a lot of Azrai to attack. I need to capture a few more of those. And they'll probably be faster than the August Key because they've got those ice shields. As it turns out, the ice shields don't actually block attacks, they'll just damage me if I get too close. So most of my melee attacks will be no good, and I'll have to rely heavily on Bullseye. But that's not a problem, I've been relying heavily on Bullseye as it is. Of course, I didn't figure that out just yet. And there's Quasarelli shown off to full effect. It just falls from the sky and deals some earth damage. Yep, here's where I notice you can just shoot right through their shields and keep damaging them. And the invulnerability frames from the capture animation were my very best friend just then. Interestingly, they drop warm tree nuts, even though they're ice elemental. And now I've increased its ammo count to the maximum. So let's take a look at these new folks that I've got. Here's Selkie. It says continuous discharge of icicles, but I can only make one of them appear. And August Key is kind of a parabolic attack. Shoot some ice crystals up, and then they land in front of it in a spread pattern. I don't think either one of them is particularly useful, but I'm sure there are situations where I can do something with them. Having a lot of long-range attacks equipped is pretty handy for dealing with charging Azrai. At least if you can hit them hard enough to break them out of their charge. I do kind of want to take care of them before worrying too much about the Selkies, and now I've got the maximum combo attack for Azrai. I'd give it a try, but I've been charmed again. And I probably shouldn't mess around too much with non-Earth attacks on the Selkie, because I need to capture them. The good news is, they don't really have a lot of hit points for surviving the Earth attacks. I can draw out their id very quickly. It's only if I want to defeat them that it takes a long time. I saw a crystal here somewhere before. Ah, there it is. And it is indeed a picture book page. So there's the full Azrai combo, and as you can see it takes almost no MC to use. So this is us fighting Excedra. We shoot it out of the sky with Gargantua, and then burn it with Hinky Punk. And I'll certainly be sure to do that when the time comes. But I'm more interested in that passage off to the east there. Sort of a dead-end looking path, if ever I've seen one. And since we're still missing some stuff, we want to check out every room. I'd want to check out every room, even if we had everything. Now we got to fight some August Key in a very small space. And I still need to absorb one more Selkie. Yep. 
five more August key. Which is plenty. I thought I was going to be out of range there, but... You can't underestimate the spread of these guys' ice chunks. And when I don't need to do anything with. I can just beat them, capture them, whatever. At this point, I do need to defeat a bunch of Azrai with Anwen. And I'm dangerously low on hit points. Don't really want to risk getting killed at this point. So, even though it didn't really do me a whole lot of good, I felt I kind of needed to use Transcension at that point. Beat a couple of enemies and hopefully get some life crystal drops. I used Transcension way too early. Alright, we need an area attack here. Those of you who haven't watched the grinding videos probably aren't familiar with Maximilian, but... Give it a short charge and it'll spread destroy element attack over a wide area. And I haven't even unlocked any of this guy's karmas yet. I'll be doing that later in the chapter. He becomes quite impressive. And that is some good experience. Not seeing a whole lot of health drops, but I think I can survive for the moment. Oh, there's one. Now I can survive even more moments. And inside the crystal, another picture book page. This one actually would have been a lot handier before, but it shows me attacking a Selkie with Draruku, so... Again, a hint that Earth Element is the only thing that's effective on them. And it is indeed a dead end, no other way out. So I think it's about time to head to the mini-boss. But I gotta fight my way through a bunch of enemies first. And remembering I need to kill some of these guys with Anwen, let's get that ready. Problem is, once again, they tend to fall down at almost the slightest provocation, and then I gotta wait for them to get up before I can hit them again. They're not particularly weak to ice, so it takes a lot of attacks to get anything done. I'm gonna go for Pori against the Selkies, because it's got a nice range. I think better than Jerugu. And they both use up enough MC that I can only use them once at a time. So, functionally, not a whole lot of difference that I can tell. I need to capture five more of them. We can do that. Very slowly and painstakingly. Anwen is always going to be a solid choice for Ice Element, I think. Well, at least for the duration of this video. So that's two out of five, I believe. I'm not really sure why I'm changing to a fire element here, because it's not an element-colored crystal. But yeah, this room actually has a second half with a couple of Afank in it, and probably some other enemies. Like some Selkie! I don't think my fire attack is going to phase it very much. Unfortunately, Afank, I believe, are immune to Earth Element attacks, so I'm going to have to draw the Selkie out. Not too hard. Afank are really slow, and Selkie just books it with that armadillo spin it's got. And now, back to Afank where, for whatever reason, my bullseye is not aiming upward to hit them. I...
kind of thought it would, but instead I'm going to have to wait until they get down the hill a bit and I can target them properly. Interestingly, their icicles seem to block the bullets. And I don't want to kill these guys with this, particularly because I need to kill them with Barrager. Maybe I can capture it without getting hit. Oh no, the other one's coming, and this guy is not playing ball. Well, as far as I know, there's no way to break off this capture midstream, so I've just gotta keep attempting and hope the other one just stands where it is. Well, I got lucky. And I do still need to capture at least one more of them. So we'll go with the more ranged of the two attacks. That's a I had no idea you could do that. So it's got a nice wide area effect, and I can't build it up again until I meet Boggarts, which I think is Chapter 5. That way leads back to the entrance. Oh, I'm a little under two-thirds of my health remaining, I think, but... I know how to defeat Excedra, so it shouldn't be that hard. And we'll get our folks ready like it showed in the picture book. Something with an aerial destroy effect to take it down, and then fire to hit it once it's on the ground. And now I'm down to under half health. The big problem here is that this guy does quite a bit of damage with his attacks. And as Keats, I don't have any particular defense against specific elements, like Ellen has with her cloaks. So I pretty much just gotta watch its patterns and be very grateful that the smoke lingering from a gargantua attack still damages the enemy that I'm hitting it with. Also, the targeting breaks pretty constantly, because this is a nice big room. I think the room where you fight Excedra if you go through the Forgotten Palace is considerably smaller, so it's easier to keep a beat on it as it moves around. And of course, keeping a shield up as it flies across the room is definitely a must. It's got a huge wingspan and can hit you even if it looks like it's not going to. I think one more hit should be enough to bring it down. The problem is, if you get close enough to actually hit it out of the air with Gargantua, then you're close enough to be targeted with a lot of its attacks. There we go. Just have to press forward here and deal some damage before he gets back up. One downside to this particular mini-boss, he's got a lot of health. And once he's back in the air, you've just gotta start the pattern over again. I think at this point you've seen most, if not all, of its attacks. And as long as you keep your distance and play defensively, there's little threat. You can basically just wait until it's swooped at you and then hit it as it recovers. About like that. Just stick an explosion out there and hope he flies into it. It makes the fight take a little longer, but it's really hard to get close enough once he's back up in the air to hit him with Gargantua. I guess you could use Bargast, but that you'd have to get even closer. The one advantage of hitting him from close up is that if you do knock him out of the sky, you can start attacking him right away.
Otherwise, you're gonna lose a few seconds running up to him. Not usually a deal breaker, but... I think you've got the idea, so we'll speed up the rest of the fight. This just goes on way too long. And one thing to watch for is with pretty much any of his ice projectiles, those spikes, as you can see, will still hurt you while they're sitting there. So the shield is not the best way to go. Patriot might work, but really I think you want to dodge most of those attacks. I think Kilmulus can still be effective if you use it and then hold down the button so that it pops up again as soon as you need it. Otherwise, especially if you're at as low HP as I am, you've just got to stick with defense. Let me give Volcano a try, and that finally gets the job done. And surprisingly, we're not using our new capture method on this guy, it's just timing. Rather tricky timing, I think this guy is about as fast as Shefro would be periods of turning red, and I'm trying to capture it all in one go, but I don't know what the timing is for that, and with nothing else in the room to attack you, it's just a matter of patience. So it's a charge attack that shoots extra powerful ice blocks. I'm probably never actually going to charge it up. But, as you notice, there's one more slot after the mini-boss. And I think you know what that means. There's a secret folk in this chapter. But before capturing it, I'm going to move on to the save point and save my progress, because I don't want to have to do all that again. Although I did get a rank up and refilled my hit points, so that's good. Yes, of course we'll still be fighting a folklore on this path. You didn't think we'd be going without, did you? And I guess we got Anwen to talk to here.
That sounds like a familiar story. So there you have it. Brigantia, the folklore of the undersea city, is weak to ice, and the folks of the fairy realm. But now we've got to head back. The secret folk here is pretty tricky to find. I didn't actually find it when I was playing through the game until I looked it up. And by that time, of course, I had a lot of endgame folks, so... I could do a bit more damage to this guy more quickly. As it is, it's going to take a while to capture it, but you want to sneak around the edge of Agar Agar's room here, try and avoid waking it up if at all possible. Now that it's hard to escape from, since I've already captured it, I can move freely through its room. And when we return to the room where we first found Afank, and where we found picture book page 3, it's now occupied by... Kraken. And to be honest, Kraken is just a bigger and tougher, etc. But since it's not officially a mini boss, we get the normal fight music for it. I think its attacks are a bit stronger. I mean, I just got hit with one ice attack, and you can see how much damage it did. I think its ice shots might move a little faster, and the spread attack that it uses on the ground has a bit more spread. The good news is I think it gives you more opportunities to hit it out of the air, so you can take it down pretty quickly most of the time. You'll just need to do this an awful lot. and it's even easier to dodge its attack while it's getting up. As you can see, one spread attack across the ground sends up four ice shards. Rather unpleasant, so I decided to pull out Agar Agar and try to conserve my hit points even when it does manage to damage me. Here I am running at four times the speed because this fight just takes forever. I think the raw footage for this fight was something like eight or nine minutes. And I'm not playing around, I'm actually being a lot more aggressive than is probably safe. The good news is it likes to swoop a lot, probably more than Excedra did, so I get a lot of opportunities to attack. And the normal fight music sounds kind of interesting sped up. fight just goes on and on until you start asking yourself, is it worth it? And the answer is a resounding yes. Pretty sure I'm almost done. It should be just one more iteration of bringing it down to my level, burning it. And now I can finally capture it. And this is a chance to see the balance method in its full effect. It's a lot harder than it looks to keep this thing aligned because you gotta tilt the controller one way or the other and you always end up overcompensating. But usually once you get it in the center for a while, it'll be happy to stay there. 
And yes, all four of the folks that I captured in this part of the chapter are ice elements. So let's take a look at Kraken. I don't care how impressive that looks, it's amazing. And we'll be seeing plenty of it in the next video. Because to build up its karma, we need to defeat ten folks with it. And that can't easily be done in this chapter because almost everything here is immune to ice. Speaking of one thing that's not, now I do want to wake up Agar Agar. Take this! Okay, that was fun. Anyway, there are going to be a lot of quests for this chapter, and there's no way they're all going to fit in one video. So join me next time when we'll be doing the first half of the Undersea City quests. Until then, I'll see you guys later.